what about the supposition? I've mentioned it before. I'll say it again because I, I, I feel more resolute in uh, that this is where we're headed, that uh, the SEC and some member schools uh, from other um, conferences as well who have similar issues, similar concerns, similar budgets, similar programs get together and create your own world, maybe under the auspices of the college football playoff system. What do you think about that? Well, I, I don't spend a, a whole lot of time thinking about that right now. Uh, I, I fully respect and understand the observation. There has been so much change, if you will, at our level of college football and our level of Division One, that there's a bit of settling that has to take place right now. Um, Charlie Baker is the new NCAA president. I think Charlie deserves an opportunity uh, to introduce his concepts for moving forward. Uh, you know, in many ways, the, the connection of all of the sports work really well. Um, but we're going to be subject to criticism, whether we maintain status quo, whether we change. Uh, the question is, can we continue this adaptation in the current environment? Uh, as, as I've referenced, to support the young people in our programs and to bring people in so that they watch. Well, I mean, and again, we, we spoke to uh, Kirk Ferentz, for instance, again, of the Big Ten uh, at Iowa. He's been around the block a few times, as you know. Uh, he was mentioning, hey, you know, we can we charter flights. So we, we can fly to Washington one week and then Rutgers the next. It's the Olympic sports at schools that cannot afford to do that, don't have the budget to do that. So that's why I'm, again, taking schools that have similar, as I mentioned, issues, concerns about NIL, about certainties that you were talking about at the top of our conversation that the, the sport currently does not have, and just carving out football. And then everyone else has to figure out what their issues are. Maybe you don't travel everywhere in these conferences that are all over the map, not yours, but there are others right now. What about that idea? Yeah, so I think we have to start with each of these organizations, each conference is responsible for the decisions it makes. Mm -hmm. And we've made a set of decisions to expand, obviously, with Oklahoma and Texas joining next year, or not to expand amidst the current turmoil. Uh, because we understand who we are. And, and in fact, I was just looking at a draft of next year's football schedule with the opponents and dates, and we're going to have schools that travel less in football. I also think, and this is a philosophy of our conference, that what we do in football is reinforced by what we do in basketball and in baseball and softball. In other words, this it just means more attitude we communicate is reinforced over and over because we're not lost in playing other people or creating confusion about uh, what games mean how much uh, within your schedule. We understand conference games, we understand conference rivalries, and we're actually restoring a set of rivals with our expansion. I, I do think, though, you hit on a reality that in a number of sports that play multiple times in a week, the distance of travel and multiple time zone presents a difficulty that you know, our decision making doesn't require us to manage. And so uh, you mentioned how what I'm, you know, harping on to use a phrase <laughs> right now um really can't be addressed or or heated uh as a reality or even in the realm of reality until things settle i think is the word you said things settle what's your sense on when things are going to settle well it depends on how we define things right okay if it's the narrow <laughs> the narrow lane of of conference membership yes you, you've seen the the change particularly with the pac-12 being reduced as it stands right now to two members next year, which is going to be, you know, there's a lot of home and homes if that were to stay. So that's a, a, a point of change that's expected. Um, and, and so, Rich, that's part of it. When you look at the bigger picture, uh, the state and federal legislation, the litigation we have, you know, that, that's a matter of years to resolve itself. And back to your original question those of us in these key leadership positions mm -hmm. have a responsibility to be, be in dialogue about how do we move forward in the most healthy way and to the extent different solutions are introduced and considers and considered and opinions expressed we have to be attentive to what that might mean for the future and you said you also wanted to give the new ncaa honcho uh charlie baker former governor of of the great state of massachusetts a shot for the lack of better phrase, I might be paraphrasing what you said earlier. Uh, wh what has he told so far? What has he put on the table in front of you and maybe Tony Petiti and the rest of the conference commissioners? 
I think, first of all, he's been collaborative with us. He's been engaged in conversation. I think he's been public about bringing in an outside firm, Bain Consulting, to take a look at the NCA. He sent a letter with, I think, at the end of July, early August, with here's some indication of where we're headed. I haven't seen the, the full plan or, or the full set of uh, changes that might be introduced. I think that's a bit of the waiting period. Uh, what has been refreshing is there is a newness that provides some momentum. Um, there's a willingness to look at things a bit differently uh, with Charlie and some of the team he's brought in. And, and that is part of the reason I think patience is warranted right now. And then what about your conference? Any thoughts on expansion at all? Or are you done with that? Well, no, we've had we've had opportunities, but I don't look at a number. I look at what's right for us. We're really focused on 16. We have... You know, the University of Texas playing at the University of Alabama this Saturday mm -hmm. and really a sign of things to come, which will be an incredibly exciting evening. Uh, we're finalizing our 24 football schedule and our focus is on 16. We're, we're very attentive to what's happening around us, uh, but we're, we're not in the, in the expansion mode at this time. Okay. And any sense that when you do, you, I mean, the Atlantic coast Conference just picked up a Pacific Coast team or two, and the Big Ten has Northwestern in it, and now two teams from the actual Northwest. Would you consider <laughs> somebody from outside the Southeast or even in that area? Obviously, I know Texas isn't technically Oklahoma. Um, I mean, West. Would you expand in the same way that these other conferences have, coast to coast? Would you consider when that? We have, yeah, I'm sorry. When we've discussed opportunities, mm -hmm. um, we are focused on on really who we are and there's a no embedded in that one never knows what the future may hold. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the great uh, conversations with our presidents and chancellors, really the week after the USC and UCLA move was, you know what, we know who we are. Uh, our, our fans identify fervently with the Southeastern conference. And as we expand, we want to be attentive that um, we want to play to our foundation, our history, um, and our traditions. And we think we can do that even with this most recent expansion, like we did with AM and Missouri, Arkansas, and South Carolina. So uh, we, we're not ones that are looking to, to uh, be global with placement of campuses because we think we're global with who we are right now. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.